Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Autumn and today I am doing the booktube newbie tag. I'm very excited to be starting this. If you watch my regular content and you're seeing this tag, don't panic. I'm not switching on you guys. We are just adding more content to my channel. I am very excited to start talking more about bookish content. Let's go ahead and get into the tag so you can get to know me better and what you can expect from my channel moving forward. So question number one, why did you start this channel? In reality, I started this channel four years ago. I started it when I wanted to document my writing journey. I am a writer. I don't have any published workout and I don't see myself having anything published in a very, very long time. I want to expand my channel into the bookish community because I love reading books. I love talking about books and I also love listening to other people talk about books. I just want to expand my horizons, dip my toes into some reading vlogs, talking about some reading wrap-ups, anticipated releases. I love all of that stuff, so why not just jump into the community and start doing it? Question number two, what are some fun and unique things you can bring to book two? So I don't think I'm fun, nor do I think I'm unique. However, I do work full-time night shift in a hospital. When I am not reading or writing or taking care of my 10-month-old kitten, I am working three to four days a week for 12-hour shifts. On my channel, I try to make it very realistic with my writing journey. So what I'm hoping to do is with my reading journey is to also make that realistic with how I find time to read and also balance writing. And then also how I balance my full-time job on on top of that. I don't plan on talking about my job on here because that's not fun. I think that makes me a little different because I work full-time and I have to work full-time. Your girl's got bills and she's about to have a lot more bills pretty soon. That is something I would consider maybe kind of unique. Not really unique. I mean, everybody has a full-time job because she's expensive. I love a good reading challenge. I have never done a readathon or like a 24 hour or a 48 hour readathon. I've never done them, but I would love to do one. So I feel like that's definitely something you can expect from my channel. Question number three, what are you most excited about for this channel? Talking about books and building a community of readers on top of the writers that already follow my journey. I am very excited to kind of be part of both families. I feel like I've developed a really strong and fun relationship with a lot of writers in the writing community, but now I want to connect with other readers and connect with other people in the reading community. I am excited to see where this part of my journey is going to lead me. Question number four, why do you love reading? And I think that this is a pretty generic answer, but I have two parts of this. So the first one is escapism. I love a good fantasy story and escaping into a fantasy world that has nothing to do with reality. However, I also love non-fictions and memoirs. I have just recently discovered that I love those and I have been eating that shit. Up. I have been absolutely loving the nonfiction slash memoirs that I've been reading. I don't know why I haven't started reading nonfiction sooner because I love learning. I love National Geographic. That is my favorite. I love the nonfiction because I feel like I get to experience different parts of the world. You get to see them from different lenses. You get to see them from different individuals and how they see the world. So question number five, what book or series got you into reading? Way, way back in the day when I was a wee thing and I was learning how to read, the first book series that I fell in love with is The Warriors, the Little Cat series by Aaron Hunter. The next book on this list changed my life. It is Follow My Leader by James B. Garfield. This book changed my life and I think it was one of the books that really propelled me to join the healthcare field, which we don't have to get into all of that. And I love the book so much. I remember my parents scoured all over, not the internet because that didn't exist. I just remember my parents drove all over trying to find a paperback copy of this book. And I don't know where they ended up finding 
getting it, but they got me this copy. I have this copy still to this day. I don't have it here. It's at my parents' house. I'll never forget when my parents bought me that book because it was my life. <laughs> and then the last book I want to talk about that shaped me just from my childhood. I have a few books I want to talk about in my adulthood. But the next book I want to mention is Where the Red Fern Grows by Wilson Riles or Rawls. So those are the two books and the one book series that got me into reading as a kid. This next part, I think this is pretty typical of a lot of us where we stopped reading for fun in middle school, high school, and university. And then once we get out of that and we're not reading for school, we read for pleasure. Getting back into reading as an adult, I ate up Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab, and A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. I would say that in different parts of my life, all of these books got me into reading. Question number six, what questions would you ask your favorite booktubers? So I have three questions. The first one is what inspired you to start your channel? My next question would be what motivates you to continue your online reading journey? And then the third question would be do you still enjoy reading after sharing your reading experiences online? Question number seven, what challenges do you think starting a booktube channel will be the hardest to overcome? I have a few <laughs> answers to this and they all kind of piggyback off of each other. Mine, for sure, I would say time management. I think everybody understands that we're all spread too thin. We all do way too much. Everybody's always busy. I definitely relate to that. That's very much me. I'm curious to see how expanding my channel to talking more about bookish content, I will manage that on top of continuing to write and share that journey in addition to also being creative and having fun with the content I create while also still maintaining relationships, having my full-time job, and everything else that is going on in life. I think another challenge is going to be accepting that not everybody is going to agree with my opinions on books. And that's fine because reading is subjective. I will have to accept and acknowledge that not everybody who comes to my channel for my bookish content are going to enjoy or agree with my reviews on books. While I respect other people's opinions and their thoughts on books. Sometimes people aren't going to be that way with you. That is a challenge I'm just gonna have to get over and it is something I experienced a little bit in the writing community, but I think people are a lot more opinionated with books and reviewing books. I totally understand. Third answer kind of piggybacks off of the first one, which was time management. And I would say balance, um, balancing my writing content, my reading content, and my YouTube stuff, but then also learning how to balance adding something new to my plate and still maintaining the other things in my life. I want to make sure I can find a happy medium and a good balance between being a writer sharing my writing journey and having writing content, but then also having my reading journey and talking about the books that I'm reading and not be critiquing or being disrespectful to other authors in the community. Question number eight, when did you start reading? So I started reading in elementary school with my mom. The books that I mentioned I read as a child. Um, her and I would always read those together and we would cry together, we would laugh together, and we still to this day talk about the books I read as a child. Then I took a little hiatus for several years and then got back into reading after I graduated university and realized I had time on my hands. Question number nine, where do you read? I typically will read on the couch. I do have a little chair in my office. I would like to get another chair in my office, but I primarily do read in the living room. I try not to read in bed because I don't want my mind to associate sitting in bed and winding down. I don't want to associate that with reading because then I'm afraid to fall asleep while I'm reading. Or, and then when I am sitting on the couch to read for a little bit, I'm like, 
sleepy and then I knock out. Primarily I read on the couch. If it's a non-fiction book I will typically listen to the audiobook for that and then I'll listen to that in the car when I'm doing errands. I also will listen to audiobooks as I clean but they have to be non-fiction. I can't read like a high fantasy or something that needs my attention. I can't read something like that as an audiobook without having the physical book. Question number 10, what kind of books do you like to read? I love fantasy and horror. Lately, I have been enjoying nonfiction and memoirs. I don't typically read contemporary romance. I'll sneak those in from time and time again. And question number 11, what does your book collection look like? I have two bookshelves in my office, which is the room I'm sitting in now. I have two bookshelves that my grandfather made me and I will have those two bookshelves until the end of time. We also have a bookshelf in the dining room, but I share that space with my boyfriend. So I have some of my books and then he has some of his like stuff on there too. Any books that I am currently reading, I keep on my nightstand just to keep those separated from the books that are on my shelves. So I have two bookshelves, but they're small. I like to read the books that are on my shelves. I also support the library, but the books I have on my shelves, I feel like I'm constantly rotating those books. And if I don't like a book, I will typically unhaul it relatively quickly just because I don't have the space to keep books I didn't enjoy on my shelves. There's a used bookstore. When I have enough books accumulated, I'll unhaul those books to that bookstore and they give me a credit so then I can use that credit at their store to buy books like half off. I do have a Kindle. I use the Libro app. I think that's how you pronounce it or maybe Libro app for audiobooks. I have a library card and I use the library very frequently as well as the Libby app. I don't own a lot of books but I try to use my resources. I will have a bookshelf tour coming out very soon if you're curious about what these bookshelves look like, what kind of books are on my shelves. If that's something that you would like to see, let me know down in the comments below. But that is the entire booktube tag. I am not going to tag anybody in this, but if you are new and you haven't done the tag, definitely do this tag or chat about books in the comment section below. I am very excited to start talking more and more about books on my channel. So if that's interesting to you, definitely make sure you stick around because I would love to have you here. And if you're still watching, leave me the little open book emoji down in the comments below and let me know what book you're currently reading. Thank you all so much for watching this video. My name is Autumn and I will see you in the next one. Bye.